we have discussed about in the last module about business ethics management what is business ethics management and the different components of business ethics management we have also discussed about the evolution of business ethics management in which we found there is a shifting um, of the perspective from uh, managing the employees and trying to see whether they are doing things in a proper way and uh, following the standards of the organization and business or um, they are uh, diverting from it to the present focus on to see whether the organization is which is taken a broadly managing and trying to answer to all the demands of the different stakeholders. So, if we are trying to uh, shift the uh, focus to this the whether the organization is managing the uh, relationship with the and the demands of the broad social demands, then three important steps are required. First is setting the standards of how the organization is going to behave. Second, to understand who the stakeholders are and to find out how the organization is going to deal with the stakeholders and third to assess the performance. So, three steps first setting out some standards which we talk of as the code of ethics. Second is identifying the stakeholders and finding out the relationship with the stakeholders and how to answer to their demands and third is assessing the performances through audits and accounting and reporting. So, in the next dis upcoming discussions of the various modules that will be following, we will follow try to discuss in details these three steps. We will start with the first one which is setting the standards that is defining the codes of ethics. Codes of ethics if you see are defined as voluntarily voluntary statements that commit the organizations industries or professions to specific beliefs, values and actions and or set out appropriate ethical behavior for employees. If we analyze the definition, we found there are two, three important key words guiding this definition code of ethics are voluntary statements means it, it, it are the these have been arrived voluntarily by the organizations proactively by the organizations because this is what they believe that they will be doing and this is what they will be aiming for. So, codes of ethics are voluntarily voluntary statements that commit organizations. So, commitment means I understand that I will be doing it willing commitment also focuses on the willingness of the organization to follow whatever the statements that they have arrived at. Organizations industries or professions. So, codes of ethics can be at the organizational level, can be at the industry level, it can be for the professional level also. To specific beliefs, values and actions. So, what I believe is 
the way that we should function in the best interest of the stakeholders, beliefs, values and actions and to move in the best interest of the stakeholders, so that all of them coexist with each other without harming majority, providing harm to each other, then what are the actions that needed to be followed and also to set out what are the appropriate ethical behavior for the employees within the organization to be followed. There can be four main types of ethical codes as already discussed. One is at the organizational or corporate code of ethics. Second code of ethics could be very specific with related to the profession per se, professional codes of ethics do's and don'ts of every professions. Industry code of ethics, code of ethics which the industry has decided like the organizations within a specific industry will be following certain rules, principles and practices which are being arrived at by a consensus by the different organizations in that industry and which that they formally agree to follow because of the membership in that particular industry. Programs or group code of ethics, these are belonging again to specific groups and member organizations or member individuals who are members of that specific groups so that they can remain as group members. They have to follow certain codes of ethics which have been mutually agreed upon and then arrived at formulated framed that if you are a member of this group then these are the norms, regulations, actions that you need to follow so that then only you get recognized as a member of this group otherwise not. So, it there can be four types of ethical codes, organizational corporate codes of ethics, professional codes of ethics, industry codes of ethics which are like specific to the industries and also program or groups code of ethics. So, the prevalence of the codes of ethics are that it, earlier it was not uh, so much prevalent, but it has become increasingly common and its substantial rise during 90s after 90s and 2000. So, it is, um, um, but it has not been so prevalent in like SMEs and uh, in Europe like so, it is less prevalent in SMEs and Europe. What uh, could be like what are written as a part of code of ethics like it is written the generally the detailed steps of the do's and don'ts for how the what the organization wants to do and what the organization wants its employees to follow with respect to certain aspects. What are the organizational preferable ways of behaving, what are the organization's guidelines regarding certain aspects. Like organizations guidelines for taking gifts and bribes, organizations guidelines for dealing with workplace harassment, organizations guidelines for discrimination in the workplace organizations guidelines for 
how to deal with the organizational properties by the employees. So, these type of what the employees can do and what the employees cannot do, what the organization will be doing, what the what type of business the organization will be entering into, what type of things will the organization will not be promoting. These type of detailed uh, things when it is written down that becomes a code of ethics for the organization. However, there has been a debate regarding whether the codes of ethics, there should be some ambiguity in the codes of ethics or it, it should be explicitly written codes of ethics. Both sides have some positives and negatives. If it is explicitly written codes of ethics, very detailed all steps minutely written, then positive part of it is employee exactly knows in details what is expected of them from the organization and how to behave in what type of situation. The negative part of this is it restricts the moral autonomy of the person to decide on whether to do and how to do in what situation. And when you are talking of the taking a moral judgment, ethical judgment, having a moral autonomy to decide on, it is one of the marks of showing whether the organization makes people follow what it thinks like it is right and wrong or it gives space for the employees also to exert uh, like whether it allows the employees also to use their judgment and moral autonomy and in work on their moral imagination to find out what are the possible right and wrong in the active um, actions that they are doing and work accordingly. So, this could be the flip side of having a too detailed ethics code of conduct. Also, if it is too detailed well written everything written through like minute steps, it may restrict the flexibility of the um, steps to be adapted to a different kind of situation which for which the code is not written. On the other hand, if the code of ethics is kept ambiguous in nature, then it can be, it can have the flexibility of using in different situations or as per need of the situations. It can allow for the moral imagination of the person, the moral autonomy of the person, but also the uh, risk for this type of ambiguous code of conduct or code of ethics is that if the ambiguity is too much, then what is the use of having that ethics uh, uh, codes of ethics in place, because there are no clear framework given, clear guidelines given what an employee is expected to do and everything is left to the free will of the employee to decide how to act in a particular situation. So, uh, too much ambiguity may lead to each employee interpreting that that code according to his or her own way of seeing it, according to his or her thinking. 
and like maybe we have already discussed locus of control, culture and other factors which affects in individuals ethical decision making. So, if too much ambiguity is there, so the interpretation of it may be varying from person to person and people do not have a general guidelines what to follow. So, it has to be maintained like a balance has to be maintained between how much precision in writing down the details of every steps to what details it should be there and how much ambiguity is to be kept, what are the detailings to be done, what are the different points which needs to be covered while we are discussing about codes of conduct. A well written code of conduct is very helpful in acting as a guiding principle. So, it is not only the pr principles which needs to be stated, but the code of conduct should also tell the practices that requires to be done. So, if that practices are followed, then the principles are reached. So, both ways it is required. So, what coming to the uh, critics of the codes of conduct is as we have already discussed clear prescriptions sometimes means lack of flexibility. Then clear prescriptions may sometimes be difficulty in dealing with multiple or novel situations specifically in cross cultural situations with the interpretations like gifts and bribes vary in their interpretation across like various situations or in different uh, cultures. If it is ambiguous, it is then vague generalized statement of obligation which may appear just like uh, it is a public uh, relation uh, mechanism which just is showcasing that we are doing certain things, but the seriousness of doing it is not there. Questionable control mechanism that potentially influences employees beliefs, values and behaviors as we were discussing. If it is too much in depth written thing, it may appear like it is carving on the moral autonomy of the person to like exercise that moral autonomy to think in certain way and it is molding the people to and like and trying to make them follow what the organization thinks it is right and wrong and what which may be not right and wrong according to the particular persons and to suppress individuals instincts and emotions in order to ensure for the bureaucratic um, conformity and consistency. So, if then that is the criticism for the codes of ethics, then generally we also have to uh, think of how to make the codes of ethics effective in nature. So, if we have to understand the effectiveness of the codes of ethics, so First, we have to understand what if done will define the code of ethics is effective. So, two things are important in this. One is the effective implementation and administration. So, when we are talking of effective implementation, so it can be implemented only when the maximum participation of the members are taken during the ethics formation stages. So, the codes of conduct formation stages, <coughs> because we understand these are elements of organizational change that are getting introduced 
to the organization as a top down approach. If the employees who are expected to follow this code of conduct are not involved in the processes of formulating these codes of conduct, codes of ethics, it may so happen they do not accept it and they do not follow it properly. So, the participation of the employees in the formulation stage, participation of the employees who are expected to follow these codes of ethics during the formulation stage of these codes of ethics are very important to buy in their commitment and, and to encourage their commitment. The second is uh, how to discipline, what are the processes set for disciplining employees who are found in breach of this contract, mm, this following like how they are disciplined, who are found like they are not following the codes of ethics given and how to discipline, is it so, what are the methods to be followed and at what stage it is to be followed, how many error is tolerated beyond which it is not tolerated. So, everything needs to be written down pro properly for each of the different here again people have to find out work to find out the varieties of errors that may be possible and the varieties of breaches um, the, from conformity towards the um, codes of ethics that may be possible and how much or how many times of that error it is tolerated by the organization and beyond which the disciplinary action needs to be taken and what is the method of disciplining either it is a positive discipline or it is a coercive discipline that has to be decided by the organization and implementation also requires a follow through process means we implement it and then we are not trying to keep a check on whether it is being done in a proper way or not whether any modifications are required in which the things are implemented or not will not help. So, a constant follow through has to be there to see like whether the codes of ethics are getting implemented properly and what are the gaps in our understanding, our expectations like the codes of conduct or the codes of ethics will be working in this way and how it is exactly working or not. What are the facilitators and what are the barriers in its process of working? If we can do a detailed study of that, then we have to like take with this feedback, we have to rework on the process again try to modify it and see that it is becoming more acceptable and to the employees and they are like um, working on it and the organization through its mechanisms are also facilitating the use of these codes of ethics. This constant process of it is like a cyclical process where involvement of people in the decision making process in the formulation stage, then make mm, the people are working on it, they are finding out the conditions in which they can work properly or the hindrances, whether what are the, where are the gaps happening or whether the match in one word, whether the match and mismatch is there and why 
taking a follow up of that and with that feedback improving the system again will determine the effectiveness of the codes of ethics. Here we will discuss about the global uh, codes of ethics. Why we are focusing separately on the global codes of ethics is we have already understood like there are certain differences in cultures in the interpretation of the meaning of what is right and wrong as per that given situation or in that given region or culture. So, here what you are trying to think on whether it is possible like can the organizations devise one set of principle which is equally acceptable to all countries in which they operate. Because we have seen examples like the countries differ with respect to how they think about certain things. One of them is about gifts, second is the equal opportunity for employments. This mm, differs in the different uh, parts of the world. So, based on that, can we arrive at certain values which are equally acceptable through all regions of the world and maybe at the we discussed about uh, spirituality where we told like religiosity is the pathway to arrive at certain values which may be is followed equivocally throughout the world in all the religion. So, religion is just a path to those higher values. So, can we arrive at some values which are equivocally followed, universally followed throughout and in that effort we have found like respect for uh, core human values and uh, is one of the major things that is taken as the global part of um, commitment uh, of uh, ethics and what are these core human values that also we have tried to reach to come to a consensus through this um, the what what are the core values that are followed by all religion and that is that that are taken to be the guiding values irrespective of the uh, religion and the region that the um, bus business is functioning. Respect for local traditions is another principle which has been accepted as a part of global code of ethics. So, respect for core human values, respect for um, local traditions and belief that context matters when deciding right and wrong. So, these uh, three important factors like core human values, local traditions and to understand that right and wrong uh, differs according to the context and it has to be contextualized in that particular situation. These are um, more or less accepted um, as mutually agreed upon um, principles and um, codes of ethics to be followed uh, globally. And when we are talking of values, so certain values like uh, respect for the individuals and respect for their rights, these are certain values which are taken to be equally acceptable irrespective of whichever path you are following through, because these are the core values and the global codes of ethics 
are geared towards following these core values. Next, we will move to managing stakeholders relations. Thank you.